it's a different world now. This COVID-19 pandemic is really spreading like wildfire. In the U.S., New York leads with almost 26,000 cases, followed by New Jersey, California, and then Washington. And I have behind me my personal protective equipment, or PPE, should I need to take care of a suspicious COVID-19 patient. So my PPE consists of the N95 mask, all the hoods and the gowns, and the bunny suit, and the gloves, and the airway securement devices. I also have the PAPR, Powered Air Purifying Respirator. Uh, it's very effective in preventing particulates from being inhaled. Uh, the visors are disposable, but uh, we have limited uh, visors. I also have to take care of the laboring patients, C-sections, uh, anybody in labor that needs a labor epidural. So here, uh, in this hospital, we have, and as well as all the other hospitals in the United States, we have basically canceled elective cases in the operating rooms. What was usually a volume of about 40 to 50 cases a day has, um, has dwindled down to about 15 cases a day. We all need to stay apart. Really, I, I can't stress this, uh, how important this is. I actually highly commend uh, Chris Yim for telling the writers in our NYCE Writers Facebook group that he will not allow group rides to be posted. No matter how careful you think you are in keeping a distance among us, you are still in a group of people. One of us could be asymptomatic carriers and we could easily get transmission of the virus. So please, no group rides for now. What about wearing masks and N95 masks? My answer is yes and no. I agree with covering our mouths with just a regular surgical mask or even a thickened bandana when communicating with one another. The mask wearing is to prevent you from passing on infection to your companion and not the other way around. The mask will block droplets that come out when talking, so I am okay with all wearing regular masks. Let's talk about the N95 mask that I see some riders wear to protect themselves. This is overkill and basically it takes away supplies from the frontline workers that really need it. As a rider, you're going 10, 20, 30, 40 miles per hour. Dude, you're in wide open space going at speed. You are not one to two feet away from a possible COVID-19 person. You're also not in an enclosed space. Who needs the N95 mask more? I ordered some N95 masks and masks with P100 cartridges, which are actually better than N95 and I have to wait two weeks for them to arrive. Hospitals nearby here, as well as mine, are being overwhelmed, and we need those respiratory microfilter masks more than you guys. In our hospital here in New Jersey, all employees must wear masks now, as of three days ago. I actually introduced myself to my patient with my mask on like this. Forget about shaking hands. I nod and say hello, just to acknowledge them. When I induce anesthesia, I assume all patients are COVID-19 positive and use the proper PPE. My patient's airway is basically less than one foot away from me when I secure their airway, so proper precautions are in order. Outside the body, the virus can be easily killed by hand washing and disinfectants. Soap has a non-polar component that binds to the skin or organism. Hand washing takes a particularly set of skills. The rubbing and friction used to lathering up mixes the soap and whatever is on your skin is bound up by the non-polar component of soap. The polar component becomes soluble with water and this rinses away the offending organism. For the coronavirus, the cellular membrane is broken up and destroyed and washed away. A solid 20 seconds will be quite effective. However, once it gets access to your oral nasal mucosa and tracheal mucosa and lungs, that is when the virus becomes quite formidable. The COVID-19 virus can cause upper and lower respiratory disease. What is bad about this strain is that a person can be asymptomatic and still be infectious. 
a healthy young person can have just mild cold symptoms and fever and bounce back from this with no problems. What about the elderly? What about those that have diabetes? People that are immunocompromised, secondary to chemotherapy for cancers. People that are HIV, COPD, asthma. You have to watch out for them because they can be affected. What can you do other than social distancing and hand washing? Treat your body like a temple. Try not to smoke or drink too much. Get enough rest, lots of rest, and eat the right foods. Exercise. Being tired weakens the immune system. When healthcare workers get infected, they get worse symptoms. Could it be the weakened immune system secondary to being tired and overworked? Or is it viral load secondary to being so close to the infected and the worker inhales directly the virus and bypassing the upper respiratory tract and directly to lower respiratory? Anyway, please do the social distancing, hand washing, and treating your body as a temple thing. We as healthcare workers will keep the fight going and please don't overreact by buying up the N95 masks and other PPEs such as face shields and micro filter cartridges. We need them more than you do. Please help yourself to the toilet paper. Stay safe everyone and until next time.